Hello and thank you for your interest in the Madison Beltline Planning and Environment Linkages Study, or PEL for short. The following recorded presentation will provide a summary of the PEL efforts to date, give an update on the current status of the study, and discuss the next steps moving forward. Please consider providing feedback using the online comment form and survey located on the public involvement page of the study website, or by the other methods outlined at the end of this presentation. We will provide a general overview of the corridor and study process. We will then share a summary of the PEL efforts that have been completed to date, including what has been dismissed from further consideration and what is still being considered. Finally, we'll discuss what's ahead for the study. It is important to note that this is a long range study. The Wisconsin DOT does not have any construction projects associated with the PEL study planned at this time. On this slide is an overview map showing the limits of the study. The study starts at US Highway 14, or University Avenue, as the west study limit, and proceeds approximately 20 miles along the Beltline past Interstate 3990 to County Highway N as the east study limit. The Beltline study corridor carries more than 120,000 vehicles per day and includes 18 interchanges. The PEL study will identify potential long-term solutions to existing issues on the Beltline, including solutions to high crash rates, congestion, bicycle and pedestrian accommodation needs, transit needs, deteriorating physical conditions, and a lack of alternate routes. So what exactly is a PEL study? As mentioned earlier, PEL stands for Planning and Environment Linkages. The PEL process sets up early collaboration between federal, state, and environmental agencies, as well as project stakeholders. This early coordination helps to eliminate unreasonable alternatives, accelerates environmental review, and may identify fatal flaws. In the end, a PEL study can help to speed up project delivery. Most projects that use federal funding must complete an environmental process that follows the requirements of the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA. The PEL study process is set up so the study results can flow directly into future NEPA analysis. The NEPA work will evaluate the potential long-term improvements in more detail. Design and construction cannot occur until the NEPA process is complete. We will now share a summary of the PEL efforts to date, including goals, objectives, and the screening criteria developed during past coordination with project stakeholders. From the beginning of the PEL study in 2012 until 2016, more than 160 meetings were held with stakeholders. The PEL study was paused in 2016 while the Wisconsin DOT re-evaluated planning priorities statewide. Study efforts resumed in 2020. The most recent stakeholder involvement has included meetings with local municipalities and organizations, surveys to environmental justice or EJ populations on or near the Beltline Corridor, virtual interviews with EJ community leaders and business owners, and now the public involvement opportunities in April 2022. The first steps in the Pell study involved outreach and engagement. This included coordination with agencies, municipalities, and stakeholders to develop goals and objectives, create screening criteria, and determine possible strategies or long-term solutions for the Beltline. Using the feedback received, numerous concepts have been developed for multiple transportation modes, including motor vehicles, pedestrians, bicycles, and transit. We are working to evaluate these possible long-term solutions, and with your help, we will determine which solutions should be brought forward into the future NEPA process. The PEL goal was developed through previous collaboration with agencies, municipalities, and other stakeholders. The Beltline PEL seeks to improve safety and multimodal travel along and across the Madison Beltline corridor in a way that supports economic development, acknowledges community plans, contributes positively to the area's quality of life, and limits adverse environmental and social effects to the extent practicable. With input from the agencies, local municipalities, and stakeholders, 12 Beltline Pell objectives were developed. They include improve safety for all travel modes, 
address infrastructure conditions and efficiencies, address system mobility or congestion for all travel modes, limit adverse social, cultural, and environmental effects to the extent practicable, increase system travel time and reliability, improve connections across and adjacent to the Beltline, enhance efficient regional multimodal access, decrease Beltline traffic diversion impacts, enhance transit ridership and routing, improve pedestrian and bicycle accommodations, complement other major transportation initiatives and studies, and support infrastructure and other measures encouraging alternatives to single occupancy vehicle or SOV travel. The desired outcomes of the Beltline PEL study include, all modes of travel have been evaluated, all potential solutions have been considered and evaluated, a broad spectrum of stakeholder involvement has occurred, reduced controversy through a data-driven, easy to understand process, neighborhood and resource impacts are understood with mitigation potential considered, improvement recommendations are compatible with other area plans and studies, constructability challenges are understood, and limits and sequence of construction projects are understood. Please note the construction of the projects considered in the Pell study will not occur immediately following completion of the study. The proposed solutions will move forward for further consideration and evaluation in the future NEPA process before construction takes place. Several standalone strategies were evaluated to see if they could meet the study goal and objectives on their own. Many of these strategies were developed to determine whether and to what extent they would draw traffic from the Beltline to minimize or eliminate the need for Beltline capacity expansion. The standalone strategies were screened based on whether the standalone strategy was viable, if it addressed the Pell objectives, if it satisfied the desired Pell outcome, and if it had the potential for significant impacts. None of the standalone strategies evaluated fully addressed all of the Pell objectives. We will now review what's out or the standalone strategies that have been dismissed from further consideration. Constructing new high mobility roadways were investigated as standalone strategies to determine if they would address the Pell goal and objectives. The North Mendota Parkway options, shown in green, would provide mobility north of Lake Mendota but would not reduce Beltline traffic volumes enough to satisfy the Pell operational objectives. They also do not address Beltline safety or infrastructure deficiencies, and it is anticipated that they would have large natural resource impacts. Therefore, they were eliminated as a standalone strategy and from further consideration as part of the Pell study. Similarly, the South Reliever, shown in red, would capture a large amount of traffic south of the Beltline, but would not reduce Beltline traffic volumes enough to satisfy the Pell operational objectives. This option would also not address the Beltline safety or infrastructure deficiencies, and it is anticipated to have significant natural resource impacts as well. Therefore, it was also eliminated as a standalone strategy and from further consideration as part of the Pell study. Standalone strategies in the form of rail, bus rapid transit, and Beltline buses were also evaluated. The Transport 2020 study, shown in blue, indicated rail could greatly enhance access to and through the isthmus. However, it would not remove enough traffic from the Beltline to improve traffic operations and would not address Beltline safety and infrastructure deficiencies. It was eliminated as a standalone strategy and from further consideration in the PAL study. Bus Rapid Transit, or BRT, shown in purple, was previously considered in the PEL and will now be implemented by Metro Transit in 2023. Beltline buses, or transit on the Beltline, shown in orange, was also evaluated. BRT and Beltline buses would not satisfy all of the PEL objectives, but would address several PEL objectives that focus on alternate mode mobility and access. Therefore, they have been eliminated as standalone strategies, but are still being evaluated for possible inclusion as part of a long-term Beltline strategy. The Pell study evaluated implementation of Madison in Motion's infill scenario, which would result in an increase in households and employment by redeveloping urban activity centers. 
This was found to actually increase Beltline traffic volumes and would not satisfy the Pell objectives. Therefore, it has been eliminated as a standalone strategy and from further consideration. However, the impact of higher infill development on the recommended long-term solutions may be evaluated in the future. Also, as part of scenario planning, the Pell team evaluated what would happen if alternate modes of travel, including walking, biking, and riding transit tripled in Dane County. This would have a very modest effect on Beltline traffic volumes and consequently would not satisfy the Pell objectives. Therefore, it has been eliminated as a standalone strategy. The Pell study team also evaluated an option that combined the off-corridor strategies, the North Mendota Parkway, bus rapid transit, and the South Reliever. Combining these strategies resulted in projected future Beltline traffic volumes being similar to what they are today. These combined strategies are anticipated to incur considerable land and monetary impacts and would not address the Beltline safety deficiencies or infrastructure conditions. Therefore, this option has been eliminated as a standalone strategy and from further consideration in the Pell study. To date, we've completed a high-level look by evaluating and eliminating the standalone strategies just described. We will now focus on specific improvements, which we would like your input on. So what is still being considered in the Pell study? The Pell study is now investigating different improvements at specific locations along the Beltline that when combined will address the study goal and objectives. We are calling these components and they include new local road crossings or connections, for example, constructing a new bridge over the Beltline, improved transit, mainline and interchange improvements, pedestrian and bicycle connections, for example, constructing a new path to connect areas along or across the Beltline, and park and ride options, for example, adding a new park and ride lot near a Beltline interchange. The Pell team will assemble various components into what we're calling strategy packages, or the long-term vision for the Beltline Corridor. The Pell study will combine different components into multiple strategy packages, which will be presented at a future public meeting. The feedback we receive from this meeting will help determine what components should be included in those strategy packages. The next slides will present the components currently being considered in the Pell study. Several roadway components are being considered and evaluated for roadway crossings under or over the Beltline or connections near the Beltline. Sidewalk and bicycle accommodations would be included on these potential new crossings. The crossings shown in blue were previously evaluated and with input from local municipalities and other stakeholders have been dismissed from further evaluation. The following potential crossings and connections are being evaluated in the Pell study. Component A considers a crossing of the Beltline west of Gammon Road. Component B considers a crossing of the Beltline east of Gammon Road. Component C considers a crossing of the Beltline west of Whitney Way. Component D considers a crossing of the Beltline west of US Highway 14 or Park Street. Component E considers a connection across US Highway 14 south of the Beltline. And component F considers connecting West Broadway and John Nolan Drive via the John Nolan Drive service road. Several components are being considered and evaluated for pedestrian and bicycle crossings under or over the Beltline or connections near the Beltline. Component A would cross the Beltline north of Old Sock Road. Component B would cross the Beltline south of Old Sock Road. Component C would cross the Beltline west of Whitney Way. Component D would cross Whitney Way north of the Beltline. Component E would connect the southwest bike path to the Beltline path at Whitney Way north of the Beltline. Component F would connect Seminole Highway to Todd Drive and eventually to the Cannonball Path along the north side of the Beltline. Component G would connect Seminole Highway to the Cannonball Path on the south side of the Beltline. Component H would cross the Beltline west of US Highway 14 Park Street. Component I would cross US Highway 14 south of the Beltline. Component J would cross Monona Drive to US Highway 51 Stoughton Road south of the Beltline. It would also connect the Beltline to Terminal Drive on the west side of US Highway 51. 
and component K would connect Femrite Drive to County Highway N. Several components are being considered and evaluated for park and ride locations near the Beltline. Specific locations for potential park and rides have not been identified. The starred locations shown were developed through previous coordination with stakeholders. Generally, the locations are near Madison Metro Transit routes in major pedestrian and bicycle facilities with the goal of maximizing the opportunity for commuters to park outside of the Beltline corridor and complete their trip by carpool, transit, biking, or walking. The locations with a red star were recommended in the Southwest Region Park and Ride System study. The dark blue lines represent the approximate location of relevant major multi-use paths. Potential park and ride locations being considered in the Pell study include Component A near the Beltline on US Highway 14 in the city of Middleton, Component B near the intersection of County Highway M and Mineral Point Road, Component C near the intersection of County Highway M and Midtown Road, Component D near the Verona Road and County Highway PD interchange, Component E near the intersection of Fish Hatchery Road and County Highway PD, Component F near the McCoy Road and Lacey Road interchanges on US Highway 14, and Component G near the US Highway 51 and Siglacow Road interchange. Several components are being considered and evaluated for transit priority at interchanges with the Beltline. Transit priority would allow buses to pass cars lined up at traffic signals at or near the Beltline and would allow buses easier access through intersections to improve on-time service. This slide shows Beltline interchange locations as red stars and the dash lines represent current bus rapid transit or BRT proposed routes. Note that the blue BRT route is proposed to cross the Beltline at the Mineral Point Road interchange. The green BRT route is anticipated to cross the Beltline at the Fish Hatchery Road interchange. A draft transit network redesign has been developed by Metro Transit. The Pell study team continues to monitor the development of the redesign and anticipates considering any adopted network changes in the Pell study. Next, we will discuss the Beltline mainline components. The Wisconsin DOT is currently constructing the flex lane on the Madison Beltline. This project is an initial solution to ease Beltline congestion by allowing traffic to travel on the inside shoulder during the busiest times of the day. When it is less busy and traffic volumes are lower, the inside shoulder will be close to travel and be available for emergency stopping as it is today. Possible long-term mainline solutions being considered in the Beltline Pell study include, no build or preserve and maintain, once the flex lane is completed, no other improvements would be made other than routine maintenance to the Beltline. Extend the flex lane. The flex lane would continue west to Middleton, so it would extend the length of the Beltline corridor. This option may also include improvements to weaving areas or places where traffic entering the Beltline mixes with traffic wishing to exit at the next off-ramp. These areas often have safety concerns and are where freeway operations frequently break down. Add one lane. One lane would be added in each direction on the Beltline that would always be open. The flex lane from Whitney Way to Interstate 3990 would remain. This option may also include improvements to weaving areas to improve safety and eliminate bottlenecks. The following slides show the possible Beltline mainline components in more detail. The no build or preserve and maintain component would maintain the existing Beltline flex lane shown in orange. No improvements other than regular maintenance would occur. The extend flex lane component would extend the flex lane to the east and west, which is shown in purple. The flex lane would end at Parmenter Street on the west end of the project limits and at Interstate 3990 on the east end. Also included are potential improvements to some or all of the 10 weave locations that have been identified by a yellow star. Finally, the add one lane component would add a general purpose lane shown in green to the length of the belt line in both directions between Parmenter Street and Interstate 3990. The added lane would always be open to traffic. It would also extend the flex lane to the east, shown in purple, ending just west of Interstate 3990. 
This mainline component may also make improvements to some or all of the 10 weave locations identified by a yellow star. Next, several interchange components are being evaluated. The most promising layouts at interchanges along the Beltline typically consist of conventional improvements such as adding through lanes or adding or extending turn lanes. These are noted by a tan circle. Some interchanges required review of more complex layouts to address identified safety or operational issues. These are noted by a red circle. The interchange components assume that safety improvements will be implemented where necessary. Pedestrian and bicycle accommodations will be added or improved as part of the interchange improvements. Transit priority will be implemented at specific interchanges as determined through screening and feedback received. And motor vehicle capacity will be added on the streets crossing the Beltline where needed to reduce recurring congestion. The interchange components also assume other committed projects, such as the improvements already planned at the County AOB intersection will be implemented. All interchange components noted on the slide will be carried forward as possible parts of the draft strategy packages. So what's next for the Beltline Pell study? As discussed earlier, the Pell study team is currently working on selecting the highest priority components. The feedback received from these public involvement meetings will help determine what components will be carried forward into the strategy packages. This fall, the Pell study team anticipates presenting the strategy packages for public review and comment before identifying which strategy package or packages will be selected for more detailed evaluation during the NEPA study process. Completion of the Pell study is currently anticipated in spring 2023. Ultimately, the preferred alternative will be chosen through the NEPA process with design and construction to follow. Your feedback is important to us. We would appreciate any comments you have regarding the study and the design components shown in this presentation. There's an online comment form you can fill out and submit on the public involvement page of the study website. There is also an online component survey that will allow you to prioritize the components described in the presentation. You can scan the QR code on the slide to access the survey or click on the online survey link on the public involvement page of the study website. You may also contact Wisconsin DOT Project Manager Jeff Behrens with any questions or comments you may have. Please provide all comments by May 13, 2022 to make sure your feedback is incorporated into determining the highest priority components to be included in the strategy packages. Thank you for viewing this presentation. If you'd like to review the exhibits, including the individual components that were just presented, you can find them on the public involvement page of the study website. We appreciate your interest in the Beltline Pell study, and we look forward to gathering your input as we continue forward with our planning process.